NASA is set to begin construction on a gateway to the moon, a space station that will connect the Earth and our moon in a profound new way and enable the next generation of deep space science and research. The Gateway Station is a multifaceted construction project involving NASA, the European Union, Japan, Canada, and a host of private aerospace contractors. Like the ISS before it, the Gateway will serve as an international outpost. Except this station will be 1,000 times further away from the Earth and will serve as a jumping off point for missions to the surface of the Moon. Let's talk about how the Gateway will be constructed and what it will look like when fully operational. This is The Space Race. The initial function of the Gateway will be to serve as a waypoint on crewed missions to the lunar surface. The crew will dock their Orion capsule to the Gateway and transfer over to prepare for the journey to the surface. Then, two members of the crew will transfer over to the human landing system for descent to the moon while two crew members remain in the station. Following the lunar excursion, the landing party returns to the Gateway in the HLS, they rejoin the rest of their crew, and then reboard the Orion for the trip back home. Unfortunately, the Gateway will not be in operation for the first moon landing on Artemis 3, but the Gateway is scheduled to be prepared by the crew of Artemis 4 and will be functional as of Artemis 5. As the station grows and evolves over time, it will start to function more as a long-term research outpost, and eventually, the Gateway will have its own permanent long-term crew. The first phase of the Lunar Gateway is scheduled to be launched on a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket as early as November 2024, but more realistically, it's going to be sometime in 2025. This launch will send the two primary modules of the station together under one fairing, the Halo Habitat module and the PPE Power and Propulsion module. This is going to take a while to actually arrive at the moon, sending two space station modules to the moon at the same time is pushing even the Falcon Heavy to its absolute limit, so they are not going on a direct high-speed path. Instead, the payload will take a long, slow arc that will last between 9 and 10 months before arriving in the desired lunar orbit. The HALO, or Habitat and Logistics Outpost, is being manufactured by Northrop Grumman in the United States and will serve as the core module of the station. It's essentially a repurposing of the company's Singus spacecraft, which is the primary supply ship of the ISS. HALO is where the Orion capsule and HLS vehicles will dock and where the crew will live and work for the duration of their mission. According to Northrop Grumman, the HALO module has space for the crew to sleep and exercise, prepare food, and perform scientific experiments. Though the relatively small dimensions of the Gateway modules will make for a less than luxurious experience, at just 3 meters in diameter, the HALO is around 30% more narrow than the ISS core modules, and due to a combination of weight restrictions and design constraints, the HALO module will have no windows at all, which is probably the most disappointing factor for future crew members. On April 19th, Northrop Grumman posted a photo on Twitter of their new thermal vacuum chamber, which is under construction at their facility in Gilbert, Arizona. The company wrote that this giant enclosure will be used to test the HALO module. Prior to the launch on the Falcon Heavy, HALO will be integrated with the PPE or power and propulsion element. This is another United States contribution to Gateway coming from the satellite company Maxar Technologies. This module is purely about function. Once deployed in orbit around the moon, the PPE will extend two large solar panel arrays that will roll out like yoga mats, each about the size of a football field end zone. The module will utilize this solar energy to generate 60 kilowatts of electric power for Gateway. In addition, the module is fitted with electric ion thrusters that will use energy from the sun to accelerate low-density xenon gas. This is how Gateway will maintain its orbital path. On March 31st, the NASA Gateway Twitter account posted a photo of the central cylinder of the PPE module, writing that PPE will make Gateway the most powerful solar electric spacecraft ever flown. Following that, not much happens with Gateway until Artemis 4, but this will be a big mission for the station. 
This is tentatively scheduled for 2028, and it will be the first crew to make use of the station. And not only that, but Artemis 4 will be bringing along the third module for Gateway, the European Space Agency's International Habitation Module, or IHAB. IHAB will be hitching a ride along with the Orion in the new exploration upper stage of the SLS Block 1B configuration. The Orion will dock IHAB to the Halo module on the opposite end from the PPE. With these three together, Gateway should be fully functional. IHAB brings environmental control and life support systems, it will have a galley, hygiene and waste management, refrigerators, workstations, and control consoles. Still, no windows though. Coming to Gateway with Artemis 5 in 2029, also on the SLS Block 1B exploration upper stage, will be the European system providing refueling, infrastructure, and telecommunications or Esprit. In addition to everything that it says in the name, the new module will finally deliver a cupola-style observatory window to the Gateway station, so people living in orbit around the moon can actually see the damn moon. But that's not all. Artemis 5 is also slated to deliver the Canada Arm 3 to the Gateway. This is going to provide them with an external robotic system. We still don't have a specific use case for this thing yet, but it's just cool that the Gateway will have its own robotic arm. Then with Artemis 6 in 2030, there will be an airlock module delivered to Gateway. We're still not sure who's making that or what it's going to look like, but this will allow astronauts to go outside the Gateway and do spacewalks around the moon, which is so friggin' cool. At this point, the Canada Arm will become a lot more useful as well. Throughout this whole period, NASA will be running supply missions to the Gateway using a yet-to-be-revealed SpaceX Dragon XL, which is supposed to be an upgraded, deep space version of the existing Cargo Dragon spacecraft. These will launch on the Falcon Heavy and reach the Gateway to deliver supplies and remove trash. One of the really unique aspects of the Gateway is that it will be taking advantage of a new orbital path around the moon. This is called the Near Rectilinear Halo Orbit. It sounds very complicated, and it is, but in simple terms, this is a very long, oval-shaped orbit that takes one week to go around the moon. At the perigee or lowest point of the orbit, the Gateway will come in close around the north pole of the moon at 930 miles above the surface, and then fly way out into space for the apogee or highest point of the orbit at 43,500 miles. This particular orbit uses a balancing point between the gravity of the Earth and the Moon, and it makes for an extremely stable path that won't require much energy from the PPE thruster section to maintain over the long term. If NASA had chosen a lower orbit that circled tight around the Moon, then it would have required significantly more energy and fuel to resist the Moon's gravity and keep the space station in place. If they had gone for a high and distant orbit, then it would have been even less energy intensive, but would make access to the moon's surface very difficult. So the near rectilinear halo orbit is kind of a best of both worlds scenario, and when the gateway does pass close to the moon, it comes in on an approach angle that would allow the HLS to reach just about any area of the surface that they want to explore. The orbital path also maintains a constant line of sight with the Earth, meaning there will be no communications blackout periods. NASA is currently testing out the near rectilinear halo orbit for the first time using their capstone satellite. This is a microwave-sized box that was launched by the Rocket Lab Electron rocket in 2022. The job for capstone is essentially to validate that everything we just said is actually true. Theories are only theories until you put them to the test. So capstone will be testing the power and propulsion system requirements for maintaining its orbital path, along with verifying new navigation and communication systems that will later be utilized by Gateway and future operations around the moon. As it stands in NASA's most recent 2024 budget request, they have specific details going out as far as Artemis 7 in 2031, and they only list Gateway operations with an arrow pointing forward into the future. So it's hard to say exactly right now what that future might hold, but one of the key long-term goals that we know NASA is planning for the Gateway is to use this as a jumping off point for an expanded presence on Mars. By using Gateway as a staging point in between the Earth and Mars, it gives them the capability to send much larger and more complex payloads to the Red Planet. Launching anything straight from Earth to Mars is incredibly difficult. Just 
opening up the possibility of refueling a spacecraft in lunar orbit will make that journey so much easier. And Gateway can be used in a ton of creative ways to essentially give us a foothold into the wider solar system. It might not be pretty or particularly comfortable, but the Gateway Station will likely be one of the most important things that humanity builds in this decade. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.